Welcome to the talk show, The Power of Women in Business, the show for international business women to get inspired with best practices and insights on how to scale up your business internationally. Your host is Tina Kerensen from Holland. She is well known for supporting female business owners to expand their business massively and internationally. Tineke is an international business expert for 28 years and is the author of the book, Maximum Business Growth for Women. It is time that women step up and create bigger businesses so that women can make a bigger impact in the world. Enjoy this powerful show as Tineke Rensen and her guest expert combine their brilliance in business to help you take your business to the next level. Hi there, welcome. We have another episode of The Power of Women in Business and today I have yet again a very powerful businesswoman. She's based in the Netherlands but she's all over the world and she will tell you more about that uh, very soon. Um, I'm proud to present to you Jeanette Bothorn. Hi Jeanette, how are you? Thank you Tineke, thank you, I'm fine. Okay, so more, I'm, I'm glad, more about you. Jeanette is uh, self-employed since 2005, so that's quite a while, ladies. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Formerly, she's known as a social media expert. She was one of the most well-known in the Netherlands, and I know she switched careers when everybody started to do social media, uh, which I think is very sensible. And uh, now she's famous for being the freedom entrepreneur. She focuses on guiding female entrepreneurs to be uh, because they tend to build their own prison, in her opinion. Because of ambition and guilt, the top five of Clifton, which is from Gallup Training Strength, uh, yeah. Clifton Strength are. One, a maximizer. Two, significant. Three, futuristic. Four, self-assurance. And five, activator. Which means she always sees possibility into people. She focuses on people's strong points. She activates and looks at the future. And more about Jeanette. She is the author of six books. She owns an Icelandic horse. She loves cheese. Hey. <laughs> yeah. That's our culture. She loves chocolate. Um, um, more of an, and she's, she uh, considers herself being quite an introvert person. Well, yeah, today you won't be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So listen, we, we, we start. I have some questions uh, for you and uh, yeah. let's see what you can add uh, to the issue, the topic, doing business internationally. Yeah, um, absolutely. Why is female entrepreneurship so important nowadays in the world, Jeanette? Well, I think uh, because of the internet, uh, entrepreneurship has changed. Because mm -hmm. nowadays it's possible to start your own business with like, I don't know, 200 euros. You don't need a lot of money to start a business. You only need a website. Uh, so you need to pay for some hosting and a domain name and some, maybe some business cards. You don't even need that. So female entrepreneurs tend to not rent an office outside of the house. They, they don't invest in having a lease car at the first day that they start their business. Female entrepreneurs start to run a business and support for themselves. And I think if we encourage more women to become bigger entrepreneurs, more successful entrepreneurs, it will mean a step towards gender equality. So yeah. it's very important that, that we as women take the opportunities that, that are out there. It's, it's a matter of learning how to do it. And, um, yeah, to become a businesswoman as, as an identity like, like that. And um, that's something we never learned. I mean, we are not from the generation of uh, people that, I mean, for me, it was not clear that I wanted to become an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. When I went to school, it was like, oh, you're going to get a job. And that was normal. Yeah. Everybody, everyone got a job. And now my kids are growing up and they are already considering, I also... I could become an entrepreneur. I mm -hmm. don't have to get a job. I don't need like a lifelong job anymore. Mm -hmm. 
the world is changing so fast. I think we need women as entrepreneurs. We, we, we need them. Wow, I love that. Yeah. You, you know I share that uh, vision uh, yeah, with you. I know. And the bigger their businesses get, the more impact uh, they, can, uh, they can make. So, um, yeah. yeah. And I mean, we know, everybody knows, I mean, all the women that I know, we know about the statistics. If a woman is successful, the whole village shares. Yeah. If a man is successful, they buy a new Porsche. Yeah, so yeah. In, in in general, that's that's the case. It's in general, I yeah, know. yeah. We're done with the with the whole yeah sense of being not being able to be successful. We mm -hmm. just need to be millionaires, all of us. Exactly, but don't you don't you think that women have a different um, definition of success? Yes, of course they have. It starts with um, with well-being, like they want time for their kids or they want time for their parents. Uh, and I think it's our job to plant a seed in women's brains that they can become millionaires. Mm. Because a lot of women that I work with, I mean, they are here and becoming a millionaire is a fairy tale. It's absolutely a fairy tale. It's absolutely something they never, ever thought about. Mm -hmm. So you cannot start having a business and then immediately think, well, okay, tomorrow I'll be a millionaire. It takes <laughs> years, it takes time. But I think most and for all, it takes the confidence uh, that it's possible and having female role models showing you that it's possible. Yeah. So what, what, yeah. what would be a, a nice role model for you in business? Well, I love the role models that a lot of people never heard of, the female online entrepreneurs mm -hmm. that build a million, like a seven or eight figure business. Like some of them are American, Ellie Brown, Amy Porterfield, uh, from Europe, it's Sigrun, my own business coach. They are women, clever women, that from day one, they decided they want a successful business. They don't settle for, um, uh, it's enough to support myself. They never settled for that. And I think you can learn a lot of, uh, a lot of, of knowledge from them. But I think most important, it's the mindset. Of yeah. What did they, what did they think when they started their business? Mm. And I don't know if people know the, the online female entrepreneurs, there are, there are many more and most of them, they really, really inspire me. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I think you also did a training with her. Uh, she's also very successful in her own niche. Uh, I, I missed the name. Uh, Kendall Summer. Yeah, yeah, I do know her. Yeah, I like her. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. So there are a lot of role models, but they are way too little and they are too unknown. I mean, we can all say like Oprah is a role model or Mich Michelle Obama, but they are already they have crossed Everest already and we, we, we are in the fields trying to climb that mountain. So mm. we need role models that travel with us and yeah. show us the things that we need to do. Yeah. And, and as much as I love Michelle Obama, she, nobody knew about her uh, before she, uh, her, her husband was president. And now she does a, a great job in stimulating women, but yeah. she, you know, she had a big uh, advantage of being with the president of the United States. Yeah, and most and, of us. And then I always say, well, this Barack, this, this little Barack, he was the intern of Michelle Obama. Mm. So she, she was like, she's ah, okay. she's, she was clever all the way. It's just. Yeah. Like, yeah. He, he wouldn't be chance. where he was if, if, if it hadn't been for her. I, I believe yeah. that. But no. most, most of us, we have to do it uh, with not a lot of, uh, how do you say that, carriage. Uh, we, we have to do it on, not on our own, but we have to find out our own yeah. way. Yeah, yeah, that's absolute. I think we have to reinvent uh, entrepreneurship. Yeah, I totally agree. And how would you, yeah. how would you subscribe that? Um, try to be um, so for me i try to be innovative so i try to find new ways and different ways of getting myself out there and it's always challenge, challenging your own thoughts your own mind like um if you are asked to do an interview or 
her to to speak on national television. Uh, women always, I, I speak in general yeah. generalities now. Women, the first thing that they think is no, I'm, I cannot do it because the kids have to go to school. I don't have a proper dress or excuses, excuses, excuses. Yeah. And yeah. Men says, well, of course I can. What time do you expect me? Yeah, and I think. We have to be trained not to believe our own thoughts and never, ever, ever think small of ourselves again. Mm. And that's something that we have to learn maybe from our mothers. I don't know, but it starts when you're very, very young. Yeah. I mean, well, I had we, we have to find it. Here. Sorry. I had fights at the local school here. Yeah. The difference between men and uh, like boys and girls. And I was like, this is not good. No, no. I, I don't know if I think we have to find out that's up to us, our generation, and we have to pass it on to our children. Um, that's that's what I see as role model. model. We, one of my kids, she wants to study uh, business too at university. So and she would yeah. she would not have thought about it uh, with being around me. Uh, she 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 just entered uh, a life of a businesswoman. I was already uh, a businesswoman before my kids came. So for me, yeah. it's never been an issue, to be honest. Uh, how am I going to organize this and that? I always, you know, for me, it's been the business, it's been the kids. And sometimes the kids had to suffer, sometimes the business had to suffer, uh, if, if, if I can say it, this black and white. But having a big opportunity the kids were never an issue i made sure that was arranged somehow but it never crossed my mind and yeah the, i i do believe that's that's an important we are thing. the exception in our country we are the exception well i, I know a lot a lot of women who do better than we do uh Jeanette still and they even had nannies for their kids you know uh, i know i know yeah so parents and everything uh -huh. i know i know there are a lot of a lot of us out there that yeah but they're not enough they're that's not enough, not enough. I, no, no i agree no so what going back to the topic uh, women doing business internationally um, what is the reason that many women let businesses fail or stay stuck at a certain level? You already talked about mindsets, eh? but are there any other things, any other reasons? Uh, uh, yeah, mindset is huge. And it's also the, like, who are you on an identity level? Are you the international businesswoman? Uh, can you see yourself traveling business class all the time or like things like that? Um, so that, that's mindset. Um, other things that I find, I find it very, very complicated that there are so many rules mm -hmm. and that there are so many stupid rules. Like if you want to do business with it, with the USA, that every state has their own rule and own taxes. And I don't know, it, it doesn't make it easier. Mm -hmm. I think it's, there has to be something there has to be a system for online entrepreneurs. Like this is what I offer. This is what you pay. I pay my taxes in my own country and it should be good. We should, we should be good, but it's, that's not true. It's just, I think sometimes it's overcomplicated. So, so this is typical, uh, for doing business international, uh, 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 different regulations. Can you tell us how do you solve this with your online business? Because that's your, uh, speciality. Yeah. I try to solve it with, um, uh, already prepared software. So if you want to sell international, you need a, a web shop that has all the VAT regulations built in. And if someone from the EU books, they can uh, transfer the VAT to their country. For example, if someone from Canada books, they don't have to pay VAT at all. I don't want to know all this. Mm -hmm. it's like it doesn't get into my mind, all these regulations. So. I think it's very important that you work with the best software you can get. Which is, in your opinion? I don't know if it's the best, but it's sufficient. It's it Now it's auto-response, so it's a Dutch system. Mm -hmm. And it has been prepared to do business internationally. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's very good that you have a tax advisor or an accountant who loves what you do. My, my bookkeeper slash accountant, 
she really loves the fact that I have multiple income streams from like and PayPal and Molly and the, a lot of income streams and she loves to figure it out. It's like a puzzle. Uh, and I know from, from my students that a lot of bookkeepers think that that is very complicated. Oh, very oh yeah, tell me about they it. They don't like it. And, yeah. Yeah, so you really have to get people in your team that love the fact that you do business online, in my case. Mm. So I really believe in hiring very, very good people. Yeah. 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 And, and, and do, you work with, uh, do you work a lot with international people who you hire or are you only hire in the Netherlands? Yeah, until now, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now I know, I know until the... Now, yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I know the issue about the bookkeeper with all the, yeah, PayPal, PayPro, credit cards. We have our, our deal, uh, our Dutch uh, yeah, system. Yeah. And then there is a uh, pin reader, sum up, and uh, yeah, my bookkeeper gets mad. But, you know, I taught him. He's okay now. But it's it's definitely uh, an issue. I will yeah. just just go talk talk a little bit more about online entrepreneurship. What what are the the really the basic systems that you need when you want to do on, online? You can do business internationally very easy. So what basic systems? Um, yeah, of course it depends on what you sell. But I would I would absolutely begin with an automatic invoicing system so that people can put an order on your website and it could be a web shop. It doesn't have to be a web shop, but they place an order on your website. They fill out their own details, their own VAT numbers, etc. Then they pay. And if they pay, they get their invoice in the email and they get a link to the site where they can study a training or mm -hmm. follow something or buy, uh, read something or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's like, that's really a basic. Yeah. No more, never ever again, making an invoice yourself. That's always in the system. Yeah. Um, then you would need a good email system. Yeah. Like you need a system in which you can make segmentations. Like um, I have a special list for Dutch speaking people and English speaking yeah. people. And I have a list for people who join me on the cruise or who attended my live day or like a good, Software for mail is very important. Yeah. Um, those are the basics, I think. Yeah. yeah. And, and I mean, there's, I, could, there's, I could have a whole list. Yeah, exactly. There's so many tools who make uh, things easier, but all of them cost like, uh, you know, you always think, oh, that's not a lot. It's 19 a month, online scheduling. Then there's online programming, your social media posts, oh, 15 a month and go on and go on. But in the end, it's hundreds of euros a month. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I think it's it, if you reach a certain level, you absolutely need it. I mean, I, I know people who, uh, for example, they did not want to work with the system for uh, posting social media on in an automatic way. Mm -hmm. So what they did, they hired a VA. That's more expensive. All, it's more expensive. <laughs> and second of all, they get sick, they get distracted, uh, something happens. Yeah. And the, the software is always there. It's always doing what it's supposed to do. Yeah. Yeah. But you you can make it as as big as you want to yeah i love that yeah yeah, yeah that the software should do the work so you are a fan yeah. of systemizing everything i believe and yeah, i love that outsourcing love everything that. and i think we are at, we are only at the beginning i mean now like the last one and a half years software is being developed that has everything in it like mail system web shop building a landing page, building a webinar page, like everything. Mm. Uh, so I'm looking forward like two, three years that you only choose for, I, I will choose this company or this brand or this package and it has everything. Yeah. So then you don't need all these separate subscriptions. Yeah, I know. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Wow. So we, we're only at the beginning. <laughs> That's what I thought 10 years ago, you know, when we started uh, with true. social media. And, uh, and it's, true. <laughs> it's going on. It's beautiful. Yeah. So, um, what, why, uh, what can we all do to encourage female entrepreneurship? Um, what can we do? Of course, show them the way. 
like being a mentor or showing up um, in certain networks as a more experienced entrepreneur. I think you do that and I do that as well. Second of all, for me, if I cooperate with people or I need a new supplier for, I don't know, graphic design or a website, I always try to find female, female entrepreneurs to mm. do the work for me. Uh, at this moment, there are no men in my team. No. <laughs> no men in my team. I don't know why. They're not. And of course, that's also the danger of working only in this field of uh, female businesses and female business owners. And on the other hand, why not? We make each other happy and we grow together. And Yeah, but you know, I think it's also wise because your target audience is uh, our women. I see so yeah. many mistakes male marketing advisors make when their clients targets to women. It's unbelievable. You know, the pictures like this, uh, which is very male and, or pictures like this. They ask women to be on a picture like this, the pose, which is very masculine. So yeah. it, it depends if, if men are your audience, but in your case, you have women. So I think it's only sensible. Yeah. And there's a lot of difference in like in the, the way we use language, the way we yeah. use images. I mean, I, I don't talk about pink colors here. It's not. But there, there are certain phrases and words yep. that are so masculine. And I'm yep. like, no, I would never ever say that that no. way. Never. Tons no. of value. I see that so often. Let's rock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> massive impact. <laughs> yeah, okay. The only thing I use is massive action. I like to take massive action. Yeah. Or better, yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, but I, 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 I'm, uh, I'm happy you emphasize that as well. There, there, there is so much to explore uh, still for how women do business and how they are going to change the world. It's, it's about these things, how we communicate. Yeah. yeah. So um, tell me about your challenging project of getting all these entrepreneurs on the ocean. <laughs> Because yeah, that's so a to it's an international project. It means the red spots in my neck. Yeah. So I am. I'm this year. I'm busy working on the Freedom Entrepreneur Cruise, mm -hmm. and um, it has to do with um, so why do I do this? There was a, was a day last summer in the Swiss Alps that my business coach asked me which aspect of your business is your absolute favorite. What do you like to do the most? And without a shadow of doubt, that was and is my Freedom Entrepreneur Cruise. So I take entrepreneurs from Europe to the Caribbean or back. So from the Caribbean back to Europe. And we talked about this cruise and why is it so good? And I said, well, it's not only relaxing, but it takes you out of your daily routine and it really lets you reflect upon yourself and upon your business because we don't take the time to do that. So then she said, well, if that's your absolute favorite, how can we make this into a more profitable business model in, in like in your business? Because I have several products and the cruise was very, very small. Mm -hmm. It's like, it was, it was just your toy. Yeah. It like, was, yeah, like, yeah. Your, your yeah. private holiday with, uh, yeah. It was a holiday. Yeah. It was work. And my first cruise, when I organized that one, it was like, okay, I, I'm happy if my cruise is paid, if my flights are paid and I have some cash Yeah, like that. Yeah. Um, but if you want to do it more professional, you really ne need to get an income out of it. Yeah. And um, we were brainstorming about that. And then I said, okay, I want to commit. I will take 50 people with me on a cruise. And then she looked and she said, no, that's too little. You should take at least a hundred. Because my big dream is to rent the whole ship for a whole week, and then we would cruise with fifteen hundred people. That's my my Your like ultimate my goal. Wow, that's my goal. And and there's nobody doing this, is it? I've never heard of this. It's so unique. It is very unique for Europe. There are a lot of entrepreneurial cruises. Uh -huh. uh, most of them are very short. It's only three days from Miami or places like that. So in America, the USA. It's really normal to okay. cruise, but in Europe, I, I've never heard it like this. No, 
and especially not for this duration because this cruise takes 17 nights so it's mm. two and a half weeks mm -hmm. and um that's that's uh, that's really an investment in time and money yeah and I, but i know it's it's worth every penny or every euro or whatever because it really it's something that you block in your calendar so right now it's like the beginning of the year we just survived the winter but now already i i already know that this year november the end of november when it's getting cold and gray and i will be sailing to the caribbean again and i mean i'm instant happy <laughs> <laughs> i can see the change oh, oh yeah this is, this is, yeah it's like going to the sun and meeting all these people and having the time to just yeah, just lay down and read a book or write a book or but but that's that's for you that's what you love but but what's in it for the the people who join because i remember when you told me i was like oh 17 days away no uh little internet uh it's like it, it's a holiday i spend those days with my kids on holiday i remember my yeah, uh, response so why should yeah. somebody go so i think one of the first things that you should realize and that's more of um it's a question that you have to answer yourself and be very honest is there a period in the year that it's only about you and your business and there are no clients there are no distractions there's no team there are no meetings so a period in the year and some people i mean they go into a house in the woods or whatever mm. so they, they can do that alone they can be focused and have the discipline to do that I can't. I, I'm, I'm more like, I'm a workaholic. I love to work. So if I'm at home, I just work. I like that. Uh, and I know you a little bit and uh, uh -huh. you have some workaholic tendencies. I think. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so it's, it's being honest and saying to yourself, I need the time for myself and my business. I don't want to be alone. Mm -hmm. I mean, being on a cruise ship, it's, it's special. There are a lot of people. And there are a hundred entrepreneurs. So within the group of hundred entrepreneurs, you can find people helping you. I think with every aspect in your business, mm. we will have lawyers, graphic designers, a lot of online entrepreneurs, but also, uh, relationship coaches, flirt coaches, uh, Feng Shui specialists. I don't, I don't even know what they all do, but they are so they are, that that's what I like. They are so different. And everybody who joins this cruise is very helpful and open-minded. They want to work on themselves and they are open to work with you. It's, it's because you travel alone. Most of them travel alone and they are they're yeah. there for the group. And I think that's really unique. And what, what, also, when they get home, what do they have? Like, do they have a blueprint for the next five years or do they have, uh, uh, okay, tell me. No. <laughs> Um, I, so I did five cruises already. So what I'm, what I tell is from experience. Every first day on the cruise, people are still in the energy of, um, like we are now working, getting results, um, do, uh, get your to-do list done. So on the first day, people are really, um, I'm going to write a book or I'm going to finish this or that. I'm going to, to, um, to get all these videos for my online training. And I say, oh, it's good. You should do that. But I know that it takes about two, three days and then they start to do something different. So I can promise people that they can finish things and I know that they can, but I also know there is this, this other process that will start once we get to the ocean it's like the, the the question of am i really happy with this business am i happy with myself like it's it's like they hit a wall sometimes mm. so on thir the third or the fourth day at the ocean um that's that's the day that i i call that the cry day mm. people cry they're like oh i don't want this anymore and i miss my kids i miss my husband i miss my house i miss my whatever they miss everything they have no control over their business because they are gone and not having control is very difficult for a female entrepreneur. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's beyond control, I think. Because, yeah. 
um, it, it's also really the disconnect. Mm -hmm. You have to imagine yourself being on this very, very big Atlantic Ocean. And I mean, the, the ocean is so big, you are on this huge ship. But if you look at the map, the ship is like tiny, mm -hmm. very, very small. And you are on the ship and the ocean is big. So you cannot escape. You cannot take a plane. You cannot take a train. You have to stay on the ship until we reach the other side. True. And that's a feeling that I think a lot of people have never experienced because they're always connected. There's always someone to help them. They've always had a partner around them or whatever. And all of a sudden they are alone but they are not i would say maybe they are lonely but they're not alone i mean we are in a group so we do take care of you and i don't care if people cry i say that's normal you should cry yeah it's okay <laughs> speak to you tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> but leave it at the ocean so it's i think that's the, the power of this cruise i don't promise any blueprints or getting rich quick schemes or whatever no it's it has nothing to do with that. But there are workshops uh, which they can attend. Yes, we and have it's... workshops, we have conferences. So we have a two day conference and five days of workshops. So you can get a lot of information, but the real profit, like the real thing that, that, that you take back is that feeling of, um, it's, it's even hard to explain. It's the feeling of that the earth is so beautiful that we have been on the ocean and you feel so tiny mm. and and at the same time you are part of this group and part of a bigger group it's also the joy of going back home and like oh things are still normal True. and i'm refreshed and i have a new vision for my company i know from, because I, i've done it five already that people uh, came home with the decision to sell their company to finally, 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 finally start to dream about the business. They never had the guts to really dream big. Mm. And that's what the cruise does. Like that's what, what it, it, it really puts you on a different track. I think. No, oh, that's like, good. So it's a life, there's the business before the cruise and there's the business after the cruise and they're usually quite different. Well, that's, Thank that's you. a big, uh, a big takeaway. Yeah. 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 I, I like that. So that's yeah, worth the 17 days. <laughs> huh? Sorry. Now, it's, it's also one of the reasons that I changed because my first cruise that I was, I was there as a participant during my first cruise, I was talking, um, about what, what really, um, ignites me. So what, what lights me and what, what, what what can you wake me up for? And that was not social media. I like social media. Oh, so that's how you made the change. Yes. I didn't know that. Uh -huh. in, in 2015, the process started. Yeah. I don't want to be known as a Facebook specialist or no, it's boring. I think so. I love to talk about personal development and I love to do mindset stuff. And so my first pivot started in my first cruise, okay. transatlantic cruise. Yeah. And I love that now you want to share that experience and you yeah. choose that as uh, one of your business models and your biggest business model this year, I believe. How many people already joined? Uh, almost 30. Well, there you go. So there's plenty yeah, of time to go. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. and, and the, the reason why I brought this up, is because there's a lot of international people there, isn't it? From all over the yeah, world. I um, have the statistics here. I did some preparation because I knew you were going to ask for it. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and that's I a have, gut feeling. <laughs> Good. Yeah. And I have a zoom call tonight with Vienna. Mm -hmm. And, um, where is it? Uh, and two people from Vienna want to sign up tonight. So, I have, okay, half of the people now are from Holland, from mm -hmm. the Netherlands. They are my network and like, yeah, yes, yeah. I can see that. Uh, almost 15% is from Switzerland. Mm -hmm. Then we have Austria, 11% and Germany, 11%. So I think Austria will 
get some increase. Money. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Belgium almost four percent, and Iceland seven and a half percent. Wow. Excellent. So it's it's West Euro European until now. Mm -hmm. Then we have uh, almost twenty nine percent male, and uh, the rest seventy one is female. Mm -hmm. So over a quarter is already male, and they're not only partners; they're also uh, uh, they they also book single. Mm -hmm. uh, then I did a, an age statistic, and the oldest at this moment that booked is sixty five. The youngest is twenty three. Wow. And the average is forty nine point seven. Okay. Almost fifty years. Ah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah that yeah that's that's when women can leave their kids behind usually <laughs> usually it's easier yeah okay <laughs> so wow yeah. but but when yeah. when people really want to scale up their business internationally and 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 their network internationally uh, especially with online entrepreneurs this is a good opportunity this is an excellent opportunity because yeah. we all bring our own networks into the ship they, yeah. they don't all they are not all there physically but if someone would tell me well i need a publisher for this or that or you know a publisher in the us or whatever i can say yes i know people mm. so we all bring our own networks into the ship yeah so so yeah. even if you don't want me telling saying this maybe but it is a big possibility to scale up very quick yeah i think no i i like scaling up and mm. i like um i like people having the vision of a much bigger company that can also run without them. Yeah. Like I'm going to do this every year, uh, the cruise. And um, if people think, well, I want to go there again in 2020, they can join again. Like in tw 2021, they can join again. Yeah. yeah. And I have people on my list now. I think one of them booked three times already. Wow. So this is the third time. And um, some of them booked for the second time mm. and and it's all because they know that they can expect fun and they can expect nice people etc but they also book for the experience mm -hmm. to really yeah. be disconnected yeah hey i have one more question for you this was a little sidestep because it's so unique i usually don't ask uh, women to promote their things but i don't know anybody organizing this and i know it could be such a good uh, opportunity but my last question uh, for you, uh, Jeanette, um, why are you w hesitant about international entrepreneurship? Because if I would have known upfront how much work it is to organize this for a hundred people, I don't know if I would have started. And I think that's the um, whole trick in scaling up and thinking big. If you know upfront that, that if you know all the obstacles up front, you're like, ah, let's, let's not do it. It's risky and too dangerous. And it's a lot of work and I have to pay a team, have to find new people. Uh, let's not start. So I think, um, I decided that if I want to reach big goals, that I cannot be hesitant. Mm. Um, and still, I mean, I have that feeling every day, like, oh, where did, why, why did I start this? Oh, stop and thinking so that. Okay they were. <laughs> stop thinking that. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. That's that's. I train myself. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. But I can, I can really, really imagine that people think, well, this is, it's too difficult. It's too much for me, and people will laugh at me for this. And uh, and now it's it's a bit on the contrary. Because people really, really like the idea, like, what, what are you doing? I'm like, yeah, I'm cruising with entrepreneurs and uh, we cross the ocean. And, oh, you can do this too. <laughs> so it's, it's I, I, now I find um, people are inspired by this. Uh, so in Germany, I don't know if people speak German, but in, in the German speaking market, I'm known as the Kreuzfahrt lady. Haha, <laughs> Kreuzfahrt. Yeah. <laughs> the Kreuzfahrt lady. Comes the Kreuzfahrt lady out? Is the cruise lady coming again? Yeah. Um, and I, I think that's something, it is so unique that people will remember you for this. And for me, this is my passion is, is maybe 
it's a stupid word, but this is for me, it comes together because I like people. I like, I love to travel. I love to see new places, but I also love my tranquility because I said to you, I'm more of an introvert than I thought I would be. I love to be in the silence of my own cabin, balcony doors open, and then, I don't know, reading a book or listening to some music or mm. just doing something on my own. Yeah. Or watching the sun shine on the ocean. You know, I love that. I've, I've been on cruises. It, it's so, that's really, uh, you, I, you're right. I remember that that was a favorite thing I did, hanging over the balcony and looking at the water passing by and the sunshine yeah. Hit, flickering. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do that for hours. <laughs> yes, true. Hours. Because so, it changes yeah. all the time. <laughs> it changes. Yeah. And, and, and because I have this, this like personal cabin, it's only me. Yeah. It's, it's such a relief when I open yeah. the door and close the door again, it's only me. It's, it's fantastic. I yeah. don't have to think about anything else. I don't have to cook, no shopping, no nothing. It's only me. I'm like, oh, what am I going to do? Oh, let's read a book. Oh, great idea. So on the balcony, in my own chair, and then yeah. read a book. Yeah, uh, excellent. But you, yeah. What you just said, I always believe and encourage people to, to do the things in their business, what they love. But yeah, they shouldn't forget the money. And that's what many women... Uh, are not too aware of um, yeah. yeah that's true it's not a hobby no and I like what you say about had I known all this before I think you know that's even for me I sometimes say to people do you really want to start a business you are you sure you want to be on this like 18 hours a day. It's not that you're working 18 hours a day, but it never gets out of your mind. And do you really want to uh, do all this and, and, and get rid of all your securities and all that? Yeah. I, I am glad when I was 25 and I started, I had no idea what I started. No, that's true. I think it's very good to start young. Yeah. <laughs> then you're not used to like a lease car. I had a big lease car back then. Mm. Or, I don't know. That you have everything. Yeah, you have to give up more securities. That's true. Yeah, yeah. but you don't have freedom. I, I, I still can remember the days that I had to calculate my, the days that I could take off for holidays or trips. And I'm like, ah, I'm out of my days again. Yeah, I can still yeah, I can still see myself walking in a station, getting out of one train, taking the next one to get to my work. I'm like, this is not life. I don't like this. No. Yeah. Yeah. So, if you want freedom, so that, yeah, that's why I call myself freedom. So if you want freedom, um, it's not that it's there for you. You have to you have to make a living, so you have to make money, mm -hmm. and you have to be able to work on yourself and on your mindset. Yeah. It's, yeah, that, of course it's fearful every now and then, or of course there are months that you don't like, or there are weeks, or there mm. are jobs, or tasks, or whatever, people, or everything. Yeah, it's, you know, in some ways it's just a job as well, because you have to do things you don't like, but, you yeah. know, once your business is big enough, you can outsource these things, and then so new things fun. occur, because then you have a team, and they sometimes don't do things you like, so that never stops. It's true. It's true. But <laughs> yeah, you just don't have you, you. You should focus on that. I could not go back to a job. No, I'm glad. <laughs> so <laughs> keep on doing the good work. Keep on encouraging women to have bigger businesses. And um, yeah, it was great talking to you about this and about your unique uh, project, which I really wanted people to know about. Um, Thank you. Yeah, and Thank you for having me. Uh, sorry. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'd love to. Uh, I'd love to. Yeah. So bye bye to all of you. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you like it. If you want to know more about Jeanette, you can wait until the end. There will be information about how to uh, connect with her. And uh, I hope to see you another time in the Power of Women in Business talk show. Bye bye.